no, that's that's not great. If you put that behind the camera, yeah. that would. Yeah. That's a good idea. Let's see. I got to look good, Joe. I, you, I, you do look good, John. You always do. <laughs> there, how's that? That's a little better? Oh, my God. <laughs> gorgeous. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hi. Hi. Oh, I'm so happy to see you, man. It's the Third Rock from the Sun reunion. Yeah. Except it's just me. We're missing... Such, such as it is. Yeah, such as it is. <laughs> The show started in 96, right? So that's... Yeah, we, we finished in 2001. That's so a long been, time ago. That's, that's almost 20 years. 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's still one of the things everyone asks me about the most. Even though yeah. I've like been working all that time since, people just yeah. Yeah. love the Rock from the Sun. I know. They even ask me for, to do the, uh, the alien salute. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do it? You do yours and I'll do mine. The high commander suit was this. <laughs> yeah, and we did. And yours was, yes, <laughs> right. Back in those days, I musked my hair magnificently, but now there's no hair up there. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the effect John, is gone. There, there wasn't any hair back then either. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure it took us from the time we cast the show and got moving. It was about two years before we started shooting. So I figure you came in for your audition when you were about 12 or 13 years old. Yeah, that sounds about right. But it was amazing your your entrance into the uh, into the room when you came in to audition. Really? I I don't know how vividly you remember that. I remember that audition for sure, but I don't necessarily remember walking into the room. I mean, you were a little kid. You were a little kid and and we had been seeing all these kind of uh, Keanu Reeves types, you know, <laughs> older than you, much older than you. Back uh, when Keanu Reeves uh, was in the first yeah. Bill and Ted's Excellent it, Adventure. Yeah, right. It's right. in the speed era. Right. right. Uh, and these young punks. <laughs> and you came in, and the idea of this little boy being an old man was so funny. I remember that audition. I just remember getting laughs with you. Yeah, That's yeah. Because and and then I spent the next six years with you, kind of teaching me what it meant to get a laugh from an audience. But, <laughs> but I remember those those first laughs in that room because at an audition yeah. like that, there's lots of people, all the executives from the network and the production yeah. company, blah blah blah. Everybody's like yeah. twenty people in a room, so like a a small audience, and yeah. and getting laughs is like that's su it's such a thrill. And just imagine you were getting laughs on lines that we'd already heard about 50 times. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, so it's like, oh my God, we finally got the idea of Tommy. Oh. And suddenly it makes sense. We could sit here and probably go back and forth naming a thousand moments that so we remembered. Just hilarious moments. How about the crickets? Oh yes, <laughs> yes. I had several uh, April Fool's jokes. You did an April Fool's joke, which convinced my mom. Yeah, yeah, that's right. everyone that the queen, the queen of England was going to be visiting the set. It wasn't and the queen. It believed. wasn't the queen. It was Prince Andrew. I oh, said, <laughs> Prince Andrew was coming to the visit. Nobody went for it except your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so she bought a bunch of crickets because I had a pet bearded dragon at the time. So I was, we were in the habit of buying crickets to feed to my pet lizard. And she bought a whole bunch of crickets and let them loose in your dressing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always say I'm going to live about 10 extra years because of all the laughter. Because of all the laughter. Yeah, that's yeah, so true. Just laughing and laughing and laughing. Well, yeah. I, I just want to tell you while we're recording how grateful I am to you for everything that you gave to me. I feel like oh. you were such a mentor. And I feel honestly, I'm. So much of what I draw from, so much of what I learn, so much of kind of what I what I look to as I live my life as a as a grown man and a professional, I learned from from you. I oh, really do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for saying that. But you brought so much to that transaction. For you, it was like a second family because everybody yeah, felt really was. like an older brother, older sister, aunt, uncle. It's good... so, I feel so much that way about French and Kristen, even though we played fake brothers and sisters on, you know, in, a, yeah. in an alien military unit. Like, I really, they do occupy that place in my, it's just in my mind and my heart. And But you had such maturity as a kid, and now you're, what, in your late 30s? 39, yep. 
and you're and, and you're still a kid. <laughs> it's so, it's so I feel ironic. like a kid. I feel like I don't actually really know what I'm doing any more than I did. Back yeah. then. Well, I think that's one of the privileges of being an actor is you get to hang on to your infantile self. Certainly, I I love the chance to be ridiculous, even still. And you we'll are. Never, we'll never be as ridiculous as we were on Third Rock. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And so now you, you've you written a book. I've written a book. As a matter of fact, my second book in a year. It's called Trumpy Dumpty Wanted a Crown Versus for a Despotic Age. Who is and that about? <laughs> well, it, you'll never guess. If you look very carefully, you, you'll see my uh, watercolor impression of our current president mm -hmm. as a monarch. And it's a book of about 32 uh, doggerel poems. It's not just about Trump. In fact, most of them are about this crazy and long cast of characters in the Trump administration. The first book was a New York Times bestseller, and the second one is already getting a whole lot of attention. It's not something I ever thought I would do, but uh, Something about the current political climate has sort of dragged me into the arena. Mm -hmm. You know, I was never that politically active or even that politically outspoken. I always had my politics, but I sort of kept them for myself. Yeah. I, I never felt comfortable sort of parlaying celebrity, my celebrity such as it is, into a sort of, uh, uh, a sort of activist voice. Mm -hmm. Until now. It's Until just, someone like, parlayed their celebrity into a presidency and exactly. then sort of all bets were off, right? That's right. That's what it always actually reminds me of when I see him making a speech or giving an interview. He reminds me of what we do. It, mm -hmm. he, he's, he's using the kind of techniques that you do when you're like doing comedy improv or yeah. you know, when, when you're just kind of making a scene, when you're on The Tonight Show, when you're, when you're just kind of trying to entertain people. And I'll give it to him. He's entertaining. He makes for a great, whether you, you know, if you're rooting for him, then he's a great protagonist. And if you're rooting against him, then he's a great antagonist. He's very entertaining. This is a reason why yeah. there's you know, such good ratings. So many people like to watch him, but he's a hopeless entertainer in most ways. For one thing, he doesn't have any sense of humor. You've never seen him laugh. He's mm -hmm. not self-aware, but he's so preaching to the converted and he, he feeds off their response like rocket fuel. I mean, well, and let's be of, honest, if, if you're telling a story of anger and hatred, that's going to be really appealing to people. And it has been throughout the ages. That, yeah. That's a very compelling story for you for, to get up on a stage and say, you have problems and it's their fault. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's, a, it's a very, very powerful technique. And he, he does it in a really effective way. Yeah. But, so let me ask you this. What, what, what do you think is the place of, of an artist if, if an artist looks around and says, I'm scared for my country, I'm scared of what the government is doing, where does art fit into politics, do you think? Well, it's a real, it's a real dilemma. Uh, I myself love to find some way of performing, doing a sort of metaphor of my own feelings, because that's what I do for a living. Mm. I can amuse, I can entertain. Yeah. The problem with that is this is not an entertaining moment. It's not even, it's not a funny moment. It's a hard moment to release humor. Yeah. Uh, so it's very dark humor and my book is very savage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the whole, it's the whole dilemma of the satirist. Basically he's entertaining the people who already agree with him. And mm -hmm. it would be great to change people's mind with comedy or with drama, but it doesn't happen very often. As I say in my introduction, my intentions are threefold. To make you laugh, to make you mad, to make you remember, and with any luck, to also make you vote. Yeah. This is my get out the vote effort. And I also illustrated it. So if you leaf through it, you can see my line drawings. I know your illustrations. You used to hand draw Christmas cards for the whole cast and crew, and we would get a yeah. new one each year, and we would always save them because they were so finely drawn. I shock even myself. I'm a published and indeed best-selling poet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's what I got. So awesome, man. And so you called me, um, what was it, a few weeks ago about this project that you're doing, asking 
friends of yours to perform your poems on camera. I was so honored that you, you asked me. There's so, you got some really, really great actors to be doing this. Yeah, you can you can name some of them. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I mean, I saw Meryl Streep on the list, That's Sam right. Jackson. I mean, like some of my favorite, favorite artists yeah. are doing this. And I was, I was really thrilled to be a part of it. No, that. it's a great guy. And everybody said yes immediately. I think they felt the way I did. What else can I do? And so we have Alan Alda and Steve Buscemi and Ido Edie Falco, all these wonderful, wonderful people. A lot of them are friends of mine. Some of them I've never even met. And they said yes immediately. And then so after you asked me to be a part of it and I recorded mine, I said to you, would you be open maybe to lots of people all over the world? having the opportunity to give their performances, whether they're actors or they're just having fun. And uh, and I was so thrilled that you were, you were receptive to the idea. When you suggested that, it just blew my mind because I've been paying a lot of attention to Hit for Court over the years. I mean, to me, you're my pride and joy and Hit for Court <laughs> is your pride and joy. So I, I just think it's wonderful. It's so sweet. If you don't know what Hit Record is, it's something I started a long time ago. It's just a place for people to be creative together. So we thought it would be a great collaboration to take your poems and say, okay, now anybody in the world, come and read these poems, give a performance. And our app makes it really easy. You can just look at the words on the same screen while you record and just record it into your phone. We're gonna make two like collaborative short films with yeah. all, all different people's performances. And the two we're asking people to read is Trumpty Dumpty Wanted a Crown, which is the name of the yeah. book, and Fake News. They should make it completely their own. That's true, and yeah. Why don't you talk talk a bit about, like, if you were going to sort of give some creative direction, whether to, you know, people with experience acting and or people with less experience acting, how would you give that direction to, to how to do these readings? Well, you know, you have to let, you have to let the words do their work, of course. And not, uh, not over. You don't have to try desperately hard to be funny or clever. Make sure that you that you honor the meter, and use diction. It's like hitting all the notes in a in a piece of music. You can't hit false notes. You've got to get the meter and the rhymes right. But beyond that, find whatever you think is funny, or pungent, or upsetting any of those things find uh, t respond to the poem the way it hits you and perform it that way make it your own and i suggest you try it read it to yourself in many different ways and just feel feel what you know just pick what feels best mm -hmm. beyond that ignore everything i say <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i just got a master class that was so great <laughs> So go ahead, give it a try. Have a go at my my poems. I can't wait to see what people do. John, it's been so, so, so good to oh, catch up with you. Man. I knew this would be fun, Joey. I'll talk to you again soon, okay? Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye for now. All right. Okay, Emma, sign me off.